It is electric in Iowa City before number three Iowa and number four Penn State. Don't you dare be sour! Clap for your number three Iowa Hawkeyes! I thank God I was worried on the Grenades of the Midwest and none of the battlefields of Europe. It's the biggest game in the country, Gary, in college football. No doubt, Andy, if you go by the numbers, uh, Iowa's won 11 straight games now for the first time since opening the 2015 season with 12 consecutive wins. And that year, the Hawks reached the Big Ten championship game and would go on to accept a, an invite, as you know, to the Rose Bowl. Let's go. Get in there. Great moment. Come. A great opportunity. That's what we have, and that's what we've earned. Inside Clinic Stadium. Top five matchup. National TV. That's what we live for, man. We're the men in the arena. Let's go. Yes, sir. Make them feel what it's like to play us. Relentless intensity and live in the moment. Let's go, man. One, two, three, huh? Got to go back to number one versus number two, Michigan and Iowa to find this kind of drama. Jordan Stout ready to kick off for Penn State. The Hawks will have the ball first and driving into that southeast wind. Here's the run up. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. To Tory Taylor is on to punt from about his uh, own 36, 37 yard line. And Torrey lets it fly to the other end. And it hits at the two yard line. It's gonna be down there. Murray Taylor working his foot magic once again. Oh my, one yard line. Here's Clifford rolling out to his left. Blitz coming. He's tripped up as he throws it. Picked up, intercepted at the eight. Intercepted at the eight yard line. Clifford forced it as he was going down under the onslaught of the linebacker, Justin Jacobs. Got the interception. First and goal at the eight yard line. And let's go back and thank Torrey Taylor once again. Oh. Let's go! And out of the gun. Petrus looks left. Now is going to be hot hit and dropped from behind. And that's the defensive end once again. Shudak will try and boot his ninth of the year from uh, 29 yards and he duck hooks it through. 3 nothing Iowa. Three points works. Hawks get three in the red zone and we play on at the Iowa 32. Iowa leading 3 nothing. Five minutes into the game. Here's Clifford. Lobs the screen pass to the tight end. And he's still on his feet inside the 20. Down to the 18 yard line and now Penn State's got some momentum. Here's Kayvon Lee. And no, check that Noah Kane. He squirts off the left side and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Penn State with a big answer. Boy, that is, that's a long drive. That's 75 yard drive. Here's Clifford already. Ball snap. All kinds of time. Throws it down the right sideline and it is intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone by Jack Kerner. Looking for Jahan Dotson. Kerner with a good job. Hankins had man coverage. Kerner slid over and like a center fielder put it in his hip pocket. Second down six for the Hawkeyes and here comes Laporta in motion. They fake the draw handoff. Petrus over the middle. Incomplete. Intercepted. Tipped up in the air and intercepted at the Iowa 40. He was trying to hit Reganey over the middle and Jaquan Brisker was right there playing behind him in the ball off the hands Clifford looking that way on a play fake throws to the sideline has a man wide open at the Iowa 15 and down at the five yard line Avon Lee the lone setback with Clifford here's a quarterback draw and he's into the end zone touchdown he is so good at selling one play and then turning to another isn't he well he's like having a 12th man on the field Retreats beyond the 20. Hit as he throws. It is incomplete. Could have easily been intercepted. Great pressure by Campbell. And he threw his shoulder pads into the rib cage of Sean Clifford there. All right, Robbie, uh, what do you got on Sean Clifford? Well, Dolph, uh, it's uh, still kind of a mystery on the Penn State sideline. He is in the locker room with, with uh, some medical personnel, and I have not seen him come back. He's kicked four from beyond 50. So he's got great range and no problem here for 32 yards as Penn State now has scored 17 unanswered points. Now here comes Regani out of the slot right running left. 
Third down and long. And Peaches blitz coming. Spencer drilled as he gets rid of it. Caught by Reganey. First down, 20 yard line. Out of bounds at the 16 of Penn State. Live by the blitz, you'll die by the blitz. And the Hawkeyes, although they've got to climb out of the hole, they made him pay there. They shift two tight ends left to right. You gotta believe the play is going that way. Lindebaum with the snap to Petrus. Here it is. He throws left. It's caught. First down inside the five. Down to the two-yard line. Goes touchdown. Then he's called it a touchdown. Oh, he kept his balance. He kept his balance. His knee did not go down. Would we expect anything less out of Charlie Jones? Touchdown. Touchdown, Iowa. He dove right over the pylon. It looked like he was going out of bounds. He laid out and knocked the pylon down. They ran both tight ends to the right. Penn State stayed home on the wide side of the field, and Petrus never hesitated. Oh, 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 that's funny. Oh, ah, let's go, Brady. And now uh, the backup quarterback, Taquan Roberson. Oh, he's going to throw from an empty backfield. Plenty of time. Ball's deflected and almost picked off by Campbell. The ball was touched. I believe at the line of scrimmage and misdirected it. Campbell would have had the tackle for a short game. Here comes the fake on the draw handoff. Roberson to throw. He's going for it all and way over the intended receiver. It is an intercepted. It is picked off by Riley Moss. Again, he threw it into heavy coverage intended for Jahan Dotson. And now Riley Moss is still down. He got up after the pick and then went down immediately. Well, we got a whole half to go yet, Edward. Man, oh man, oh man. Iowa trailing Penn State 17 10. The Heartland is brought to you by Hy-Vee, the official grocery partner of Iowa Hawkeye football. Hy-Vee, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. And by the University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And Iowa will go against the win in the third quarter. Pressure's on that defense. They shift a running back out to the slot. Boxer showing blitz. They're coming after Roberson. Running for his life. Down he goes. A sack back at the 27-yard line. That's a loss of 10. Deontay Craig got to him. And they were sending a whole bunch of black shirts. Here's the snap. Spots down. Kicks on the way. It's long enough. And it is good. Jordan Stout. He's been money just like Caleb Shudek. This looks like one of those drives where the blockers are Chris Goodson. Through a big hole. Gets to the near sideline. Crosses midfield. Down at the 46 of Penn State. Beautiful run, but even better blocking. They're rushing four. He fires, and it is caught a great catch by Sam Laporta at the 35-yard line. First down, Hawkeyes. Couldn't have better coverage. Here's the snap. The kick is on the way. It's long enough. It is right down the middle. Three-pointer for Caleb Shudek. And we're back to a one-score game with a minute 36 to go, third quarter. The Hawks will have to punt it away on fourth and three. Turn it over to the defense to get a stop or a turnover. A big punt needed by Torrey Taylor. It's a side-winding helicopter. Hits at the five and saved from going into the end zone. Let's see if they spot it. Yes, sir. One-yard line. What a play. What a Man, fantastic play. He shoveled it back with his left hand as he rolled into the end zone. First down and a little more than 11. Roberson will take the snap a yard deep in the end zone. They got one running back. That's Kayvon Lee. And he gets the ball, and he's knocked down just as he got back to the line of scrimmage. Fell forward for maybe a yard. Second and ten for the Hawkeyes. Three wide outs to the wide side. Single receiver to the short side. That's caught and running loose down the near sideline. Missed tackle. He's at the 15. He's inside the 10 at the nine-yard line. Keegan Johnson with the grab and the run. What a yak. What a yards after catch. He was dead to rights after about a six-yard gain and maybe the break the Hawks have been looking for. What a play by a pure freshman. I mean... He came with him one foot of being out of bounds. This will be a 25-35 yard field goal attempt by Shudak. It's on the way, no doubt about it. Shudak's perfect on the day. Three for.
for three. Penn State 20, Iowa 16, with 8.08 to play in the game. Empty backfield for Roberson. Now another false start on Penn State. False start. Offense number 78. This is Big Ten football. Here's the situation. First and 10, 43-yard line of Penn State, Iowa football. Penn State leading 20 to 16. This is where Brian Ferentz has really matured as a coordinator on what to call when. Petrus rolled out right. He's got a man wide open at the 20. Caught 15, 10, 5. Goal line. Is it a touchdown? Touchdown! Touchdown, Iowa! Touchdown! Touchdown! Nico Ragini! Ragini is Ragani! What a call by Brian Ferentz. I couldn't even get the words out of my mouth. Franklin has said all week long he was worried about the RPOs but it just burned Penn State. Petrus goes up top with a beautiful throw and Regini just had to wait for it to come down. Oh my, and there was nobody around him that defense had to bite on something else. They've been so strong all day. <laughs> to the goal line. Intercepted! Intercepted by Matt Hankins! Why not? Ball game over! Celebrate you, Hawk fans! And they're charging the field. The student body empties out onto the field. Iowa 23, Penn State 20. Outstanding game. Just a great effort. Team win. Today's broadcast is sponsored by Extreme, powered by Mediacom, the internet preferred by Hawk fans. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless and the official wireless provider of the Iowa Hawkeyes. I was amazed at how, I, we were amazed at the teeth. I mean, they even got the teeth like Uncle Duke's. And uh, the, the intensity of a stare, it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. say um, they shaped the game and the game shaped them. And I think that's particularly true with, with Duke Slater. I mean, he really helped shape football in terms of what he contributed uh, as a trailblazer uh, for, for black players and as one of the great linemen to play the game. But then football also helped shape him. He was always proud of the fact that he was able to use the sport of football uh, to go on, get his degree from the University of Iowa, to graduate from the University of Iowa College of Law in 1928, and then become an attorney and uh, later a judge uh, in the city of Chicago. I mean, he was able to use football and the lessons he learned from that of, of, of discipline and perseverance and the work ethic that he had, and he applied that to uh, his legal career and uh, to become uh, a great judge and uh, a great citizen. It's, it's, it's still an awesome responsibility because I'm truly representing his family. And there are a lot of young Slaters coming up, going into all different fields. It's a new day for a Slater family. And uh, we want them to know what he went through, what he accomplished, and the doors are open because of his sacrifices. Sandra Wilkins to unveil his bus.
Duke Slater loved the University of Iowa all his life. He was a huge supporter of the University of Iowa. Uh, obviously, he was one of the great players at Iowa. But then even afterwards, he was a prominent supporter of Iowa in terms of particularly trying to help them recruit uh, great black athletes uh, to Iowa. And so many of the great black athletes who came to the University of Iowa after Slater, guys like Ozzie Simmons and Emlyn Tunnell, they made an impact in their own right and they came to the University of Iowa in large part because Iowa was a place that gave Duke Slater a chance and they knew it would give uh, these guys a chance as well. And so uh, he loved the University of Iowa and his impact on the school, it could be felt for, for decades and frankly it's, it's still felt at the University of Iowa today. Hims is presenting Sandy with a commemorative football to mark his momentous occasion. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. And by Athletico Physical Therapy. It all starts here. The safety took the bait a little bit. I broke, Spencer made a perfect pass, the line blocked extra well, and Keegan ran his defender off and left me with a wide open lane to go score the touchdown. Uh, you know, it was a play we had had in our back pocket the whole game and uh, waiting for the right time to use it. And, um, you know, great timing on the call by, by Coach Bryan and uh, really great play design. Uh, you know, allowed Nico to get one-on-one -on -one with that safety and, um, you know, he ran a great route, was uh, was pretty wide open, and um, great job finishing by him too, getting in the end zone. You know, huge play in the game that um, you know eventually you know scored the touchdown, obviously to win the game. I mean, it's a it's a dream come true, really. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to play big time football, and this was a big time game, and everything was really a dream out there. Kinnick was rocking. I've never been in an atmosphere like I, I was in this past Saturday, and it was really a dream come true. Got eyes on the quarterback zone defense. You know, I see him throw the ball early. The receiver wasn't looking, so I just broke on it. Had to go down and get it, make a uh, make a play. It was definitely crazy loud out there. You know, um, especially in that back end zone. I don't know what it was, but the fans were going crazy. You know, barely could hear. It was making it hard for the defense to get the calls across the field and whatnot. But you know, we just appreciate the fans doing what they did, and it was a great atmosphere. Uh, you know we have, to, we have to we have to prepare really hard. Uh, it's a really talented football team. You know they got us last year, got us in 18, got us in 17. Locked in, focus, and after we get that, after we finish that game, we could take a breath for a second during the bye week. But right now we're focused and locked in on Purdue because that's who's standing in front of us. Uh, it's the next game, so the next game, the biggest game that we got, and we, you know we just trying to continue rolling that we're doing, and you know going to the bye week strong. This has been a presentation from Learfield.